For today's video, I have something that's a little bit fun and crafty. Earlier today on one of my Disney Pin Facebook groups, I saw that somebody had posted that they found this little DIY Disney pin kit at Target. It's this Disney Mickey Mouse and Friends design and style pin studio. And this has everything you need to create trendy pins. I absolutely love crafting. I've been a crafter all my life. Michael's is like my second home. So seeing that they have something that's a craft and Disney pins is kind of like the ultimate perfect combination. This set comes with 18 little different pin molds. And I think these are all super cool because a lot of them are like food related and I collect sweets and snacks Disney pins. And then otherwise there's a lot of kind of classic Mickey and Minnie iconography. And then it seems like all you do is you just take the enamel paint that's included and then paint them. What's pretty awesome is that this kit only cost $10. If you wanna buy just one pin from Disney, that's gonna cost you about 10 bucks. But with this kit, you can make 18 of them. Now the test will be with this is, do they turn out looking good at all? I mean, of course, these aren't going to be like actual Disney pins. They show that they come with the little straight pin backs. And so any type of pin that has a back like this is not a Disney tradable pin. And of course, these are not things that you really wanna trade in the parks, but for an art project to do at home, I think it sounds pretty awesome. It's a Friday night and my boyfriend is out of town at a conference, so I think this is the perfect time to do a little bit of crafting. Okay, so here we have our pin kit. Let's get it opened up and see what these little pin molds look like. Inside is this little design and style pin studio instruction sheet. All right, so first I need some scissors, toothpicks, and cotton swabs. Got that all. And to make the pins, you gotta cut out the pin from the mold. And then it seems like just paint using a toothpick if needed. Then just add the pin back on and then seems like you got yourself a pin. Total, this comes with eight paint colors. They're kind of a bit of a pastel -y rainbow. And then we have our pin molds and then the pin backs. I'm actually pretty pleased with the size that these are. And I think these are such cute designs. Like I love the little cupcake. This material is definitely just a plastic, not a metal, but I feel like we might get some kind of cool pins out of this. I'm gonna do a little time lapse and speed through so we can get all of our pins cut out. Okay, we've now got all of our pins separated and we have 18 together in total. So this is what one of these little pins looks like up close. They're just a little lightweight plastic, but they do actually say copyright Disney on the back. But if you'll know your Disney pin trading rules for a pin to be tradable, it has to have copyright Disney on the back, be a metal pin and have a straight pin back. So these are just fun little art pieces. But I'm really loving the design of some of these. There's this little pizza with a Mickey shaped pepperoni, a little Mickey shaped ice cream, a Mickey donut, and then some classic iconography too. Now I think that all we really gotta do is start painting them. So the paint just comes in these very tiny little bottles and they show on the box that you can kind of just squirt it out directly onto the pin. But I did also get my toothpicks and then a little fine paint brush to see if that might work any better. Let's go ahead and get painting. we got ourselves a cute little cupcake here. This paint actually goes on really nicely. It has really awesome full coverage. One coat definitely seems to be enough. And I personally really like the kind of detailed, sort of tedious work maybe of kind of like using toothpicks to paint with. I do a lot of very detailed kind of like fine motor skill work in my lab work. So this is all like a very soothing activity for me. So we have one pin down, but now that still means we have 17 more to go. So I'm gonna check back in after I have a few more pins finished.
officially halfway done with making my pins. I have nine all painted up and then I still have nine more to go. I started off with just the very simplest colors, so just the standard Minnie and Mickey icons, and what I have a lot left is some more of the food and the kind of fun themed things. You can see as they're drying the paint kind of becomes a little bit more matte, but I'm not even done yet and I'd say I've already had $10 worth of fun. But then again, I am the type of person who does enjoy painting with toothpicks. So let's keep on going and finish these up. about two hours later and I have finally finished painting all of my pins. I mean, you know, of course they're not perfect. It was kind of hard to get the toothpick into some of the very fine detailing, but overall, you know, these are actually pretty cute. I especially really like the little Mickey pizza and the pretzel. And I also really like this watermelon. It's almost the exact same design as an actual hidden Mickey from Walt Disney World, but I'd say these are all looking pretty good. That means it's now time to actually turn them into pins. Please do ignore all the paint that is currently all over me. So these pin backs are not your standard Disney pin style pin backs. These are the long clasps, but let's take these and turn our pins into actual pins. So based on these instructions, you're actually attaching the back to the pin just by some adhesive sticky, which I don't know how well that's gonna hold, but you know, I guess we'll see. So you can see these guys are the type of back that operates like that and then secures like so. It seems like we're just supposed to take one of these adhesives, take that part off, and then stick it on to this pin back. Try to press and secure that down a little bit. Then I guess we'll just take one of our actual pins and take off the other little sticky portion. And then I guess we'll just go ahead and stick it onto the back and see how well it holds. Okay, I did not do that quite straight. Let's see if we can fix that. Okay, so this is our first official little handmade Disney pen. I'm pulling actually pretty decently hard on this and this adhesive doesn't seem to be budging, so I think for these pins, it's gonna end up pretty okay. But I'm sure you could also just hot glue it. I don't know how well super glue would work since you do have those holes there. But you know, then again, these pins, they don't exactly weigh much and you know, it's not like they're the highest quality. <laughs> so time for another time lapse when I turn the rest of these into full pins. my absolutely lovely handmade DIY Disney pins here. Considering how cheap this kit was, that it was only 10 bucks, I'm pretty pleased with how these turned out. You can see they now have their pin backs on them, which are all pretty secure. So you could definitely add these as cute little accessories. I will say this is marketed as ages six and up, but especially on the pins that had a lot of little fine detailings, it was incredibly hard to even try and get the toothpick in there to paint. So I'm not sure if six-year-olds have the full kind of dexterity and patience to be able to do all this, but there are some pins like this which are much simpler and pretty easy to paint in. I think that I would say this kit was definitely better than I had expected. It is the next morning and I have a little addendum and update to my pin escapade from last night. Just before I went to bed, I was thinking about how the pins just looked really matte with the paint and they'd look a lot cooler if they could be kind of glossy like actual pins. So then I realized that I have this Crayola Model Magic Glossy Glaze 
This is what I use for my lollipop ears to both seal in the clay and also add the lollipop kind of glaze and sheen to them. And I thought, you know, if I just paint this on top of the pins, that would probably add the equivalent to like a glossy epoxy top coat. And so I added a few coats of that to all these pins and I think they ended up looking a whole lot better. They now kind of look almost like actual soft enamel pins, and the glaze really just makes them look a little bit nicer and more finished. So I use this Crayola Model Magic Glaze, but you could use any kind of shiny top coat. I think something like a glossy Mod Podge could work, and as well, probably also just a nail polish top coat. But now that I added the shiny glaze to them, I'm actually pretty digging them. In all, it probably took me at least two and a half hours to fully paint all of these and then add the little glaze to them. Let me know what you think about these finished products. I know they don't look the greatest for sure, but you know, they turned out better than I had expected. If you do find yourself at Target and happen to enjoy both pins and crafting, I would definitely suggest getting this and trying it out. In my Target, this set was in the stationery section, so it was near where they had the Crayola crafty stuff. As of last checking, this was sold out online and it seems like Target is the only retailer that carries this. So it doesn't seem to be too widely available. I mean, I guess it's kind of a niche product, but I would actually give this two thumbs up. I guess two pretty well covered in paint thumbs up. But thanks for watching.